I don't know what Dick doesn't understand. D the, the worry is legitimate. The reason why I do not think it's likely is because of all the resources we have put on this, considerably more than the last administration did, to see to it that it will not happen. And we're joined now by Jonathan Crone, the author of the new book, Defining Conservatism. And uh, I, I guess you always get introduced as 14-year-old uh, Jonathan Crone. I guess that's how, yeah, how the well, bio whatever. When, <laughs> when do you turn 15? Uh, in a few days, actually. Okay, All right, okay well, well, the next time we have you on, we'll call you a 15-year-old. All right, there you go. Jonathan yeah, Crone. whatever. Really happy birthday. Doesn't really matter. Well, you but came but to prominence really last year at, at CPAC, yeah. at the, the Conservative Political Action Committee meeting, which is going on again this week. You'll be mm -hmm. speaking there again. Uh, gave a speech that was, that was very well received. I'm wondering what you've seen in the last year, whether you think things look substantially different today in terms of the state of the conservative movement than they did a year ago? Um, I think they do in the sense that the conservative movement manifested in the Tea Party movement, and uh, I'm not talking about the fringe of the Tea Party movement. That's a totally different argument, and th there are some wackos out there, and, but there are wackos in every movement. But I think the Tea Party movement in general and its basic, um, its basic ideas, as manifested by conservatism in modern America, really have... Uh, increased conservatism's ability to make a difference in America. I mean, we just we see this with um, J.D. Hayworth in uh, Arizona, for example, making great gains on John McCain, and I predict in the next few months that um, it's going to be much closer than the 20% lead that John McCain has right now. Um, and we see that we saw this with Scott Brown in Massachusetts, a seat that would have otherwise been impossible for Republicans to win for the past, it has been impossible to win for the past more than half a century. Right. And I think that the conservative movement today, yes, it has a much bigger, a much greater grasp on America and a much greater um, ability to influence American politics than it would have a year ago. But there, but there is a divide within the Republican Party about whether or not to be pure conservative or to be pragmatic and actually try to win back the House or the Senate. No, and I, and I'm, and I agree with you there. I think that... Um, you do have hardcore ideologues in the party, and you do have people such as myself and Newt Gingrich and others who say, okay, let's go back to conservative principles, but let's make sure that we have the ability to win. Let's make sure we win back the House and the Senate, like you said. And, and let's, not, let's not alienate everybody. And I think that that's, that's why I personally am a big fan of Mitch Daniels of Indiana, because he not only has strong conservative values, but he also has been able to get 60 some odd percent approval ratings in a purple state, a state that's not entirely red, not entirely blue, more red than blue, but he has been able to get some of those independents and some of those Reagan Democrats to support him. Jonathan, uh, one thing we saw in the, in, the, in the last presidential election in particular were younger voters really begin to really abandoning the Republican Party, going in much larger numbers uh, for Democrats and for Barack Obama. What is missing in the, in the Republican Party and in the conservative message to appeal to younger voters? Well, I, I think you got to be really careful there because a lot of those people, the young people that you're talking about, the Republican Party didn't lose them. They weren't even in the Republican Party in the first place. And I think but you've seen the demographic numbers. I mean, you're much likely to be a younger Republican in the Reagan era than you are in the Obama yeah. era. That's exa th that's correct. And do you know why? Because Reagan had a great ability to connect to everybody, and so does Obama. He has this he has this dynamic charisma to be able to connect to people, and he also was able to use. Who's got that on the Republican side? Um. I think that's a tough. I think that's really tough right now, and I think that's there aren't that many people that are doing that right now in the yeah. Republican Party. And I'm not. And I'm not. And I'm not denying that. I think that the Republican Party right now needs to be able to find people that can connect to people at any at people of all ages. And I think that that's why um, I went to a convention. Uh, I spoke at a uh, Republican Party Florida convention. And one of the things, one of the topics I was speaking about was how we get young people involved. We find people that are younger politicians, like Scott Brown. I think Scott Brown, he's a fresh face, he's a younger guy, and I think he's able to connect to young people because he has that kind of charisma. And he, was, he used Twitter and Facebook all the time to get people involved in his campaign. And, and Jonathan, in our last uh, 30 seconds or so here, uh, you're not, you're not going to be old enough to vote in 2012, but you will be in 2016. <laughs> who, who do you anticipate casting your first presidential ballot for? I don't know. I, I would like to. Um, I, I haven't looked that far ahead. I, 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 it depends on who wins in 2012, first and <laughs> foremost. There, look, th that many years in politics, um, six years from now in politics is, a, is an eternity. I mean, more than an eternity, maybe two eternities in politics. <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm not going that far. I can go to 2012, but uh, 2016, I think. Who are you going to vote for in 2012? If you I, could. I can't vote. But if you could. <laughs> you I, would, could. I would like to see um, Mitch Daniels of Indiana, like I said, run, because I think that he has the ability to appeal to a lot of people, but he still has that conservative mm -hmm. values right. that, a lot of, that a lot of Republicans on the base are looking for. All right. Okay. Jonathan Crone, defining conservatism in the book. Good luck with the speech this week. Have fun in Washington. And, and, so much. and Mitch Daniels would have a vote if only you were... Uh, 
only you hold it up. You start the exploratory <laughs> committee. We exactly. appreciate it. That does it for this edition of Top Line. Keep up, check us out online. It's twitter.com slash the note. I'm Rick Klein. And I'm Jonathan Call. Thanks for watching. John, you're lucky you did a good job yesterday. <laughs> you're lucky you did a good job. <laughs>